Right, okay, so um, what I want to cover um, during this um, little presentation is an understanding of price elasticity of demand. So what we've got to get across first of all with this is what it means. Um, the best way of remembering it is it's the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. It's measured by the equation percent change in demand over percent change in price. In other words, it measures how much demand changes for a particular product when the price of the product changes. You have to remember two basic looking demand curves. So we'll draw two equilibrium diagrams first of all. So we've got supply. But then this time what I'm going to do is to draw a demand thing very steep. And then in this one here, demand being very uh, horizontal. So let's go for the steep one first of all. Now let's just imagine that what we get, we get um, an increase in supply. So supply moves to S1. What we can see is that this leads to a very, very small change in demand, despite a massive reduction in price. This is what we call an inelastic demand curve. So in other words, demand is very unresponsive to a change in price. Let's consider the other option then. So on the right hand diagram we've got an elastic demand curve. Now let's see what happens now then as supply changes. So again, supply grows to S1. So originally equilibrium is at P1, Q1. This time however we can see that we only get a small reduction in price but a huge growth in demand. So that is an elastic demand curve. In other words, demand is very responsive to a change in price. Now let's just think very quickly about some factors that will affect price elasticity of demand. In other words, whether something is inelastic or whether it is elastic. Uh, one thing to remember here is substitutes. Another is time and another is relative expense of the product and let me take an example um, generally um, something like smoking is seen as being very price inelastic that is because for those people who smoke there are no substitute products available so as price grows of cigarettes demand will not change substantially um, Thinking about time, in the short run, the products tend to be price inelastic. So, for example, if you're a smoker again, um, if cigarette price is dramatically increased, in the short run, you can't stop smoking, which means you will keep on demanding them cigarettes. But in the long run, you can become more elastic because you can use that time to give up, for example. Um, take another example. If you can't drive a car, you will be very price inelastic for the bus. It's your only real mode of transport to get from A to B. So, as public transport becomes more expensive, you will still demand it in very similar levels of quantity. However, over time, you could pass your driving test. Suddenly, you will now become price elastic for the bus. Now, let me bring in relative expense of the product. Very, very cheap products tend to be price inelastic. Think about chewing gum, for example. Um, chewing gum is price inelastic because it's very, very cheap. It's a very, very small part of your income. Um, if chewing gum price is doubled from 40p to 80p, you will still buy that chewing gum in similar quantities. However, if, if a luxury holiday was to double in price, your demand for that product would fall substantially. Now, with the equation, just remember, percent change in demand divided by percent change in price. If you get a number between 0 and minus 1, 
that is a price in elastic product. Minus one to minus infinity is price elastic. Minus one is what we call unitary. That is where if demand fell, for example, um, if demand fell for a product by 10%, as price goes up by 10%, it's unitary. So the demand change and the price change will be identical. Um, a good is inelastic if the price change is bigger than the change in demand. So, for example, if the price of a product fell by 20% and that led to only a 10% increase in demand, we would get minus 0.5, which clearly would be inelastic. If, on the other hand, a product went up by 10% in price, but demand fell by 20%, we would score minus 2, which would be elastic. Okay, so they're the numbers that you must remember. And that is the end of price elasticity of demand.